Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Ball Cap Bible Study. Here we are Monday, February 20th, and we are moving right along. Um, again, we're going over the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, today, we are sponsored by Savannah Station. I say sponsored. I'm just kidding. Uh, I get no money for this. I'm not sponsored for this. But uh, I do want to talk about Savannah Station for just a little bit. Uh, it's a really cool um, horse therapy place. And uh, there's a couple at our church, uh, David Holland and his wife, Andy uh, Holland. And Andy is the executive director of that place. It's a beautiful 20 acres with barns and stables and show rings and all sorts of stuff. And uh, they work with uh, uh, emotionally challenged youth and that kind of thing. So uh, if you ever get a chance, uh, I know they would love to uh, show it off to you, but also uh, if there's something that you have uh, just a, a little extra money and you want to support, I, I I don't solicit uh, for folks, but this is this would be a good one. Um, you know, uh, there's there's lots of good stuff out there. Fellowship of Christian Athletes. There's a uh, another friend of mine runs a a Christian sports camp in the summer uh, called Epos E P O S. So on and on and on, there's lots of things, you know, uh, I'm a big supporter of Hope Pregnancy Centers and Baptist Children's Homes and stuff like that. So uh, Baptist Village Retirement Centers, there's lots of stuff we can do. As you know, in senior adult ministry at Quell Springs Baptist Church, we we have uh, adopted the Hefner division of our uh, police, Oklahoma City Police Department. So uh, we're still working with them. Uh, we've got an upcoming project that if you wanted to be part of, get with Sharon Willis. Uh, but we're going to be outfitting a uh, break room for them, uh, a place where they can uh, relax and unwind. Maybe maybe they had a really bad uh, incident that that uh, put a lot of stress on them and that kind of thing. So they can go in there and kind of chill out and and uh, do that. So I'm going to do announcements first today, and uh, this is going to be a, a much shorter. Uh, I'm trying to make them shorter. I've been going. Uh, you know, 15, 18 minutes, 20 minutes. So I apologize. These are, these were meant to be uh, seven to 10 minutes total. Uh, so I just want to start off with some announcements uh, and then we'll get into the, the meat of uh, uh, the, the section on Sermon on the Mount. We're still just in chapter five. So uh, it'll take us a while to get through this because there's a lot of content in uh, Sermon on the Mount. It's uh, amazing all the things that are there. Uh, many people know about the things that are in the Sermon on the Mount. They just don't realize that's where it came from. So, all right, let's start off with, wow, I just got to thank all y'all for for showing out and showing up at uh, our Leisure Live Wires last Tuesday on Valentine's Day. Uh, it literally was the best one ever uh, for a midday 1130 uh, lunch Leisure Live Wires. The, if, if, if you do not know who uh, Blake and Jenna Bowlerjack are, uh, I challenge you to Google them uh, or go look for them on YouTube. Uh, I want you to I want you to watch the video "Ain't No Grave," uh, their song, and 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 then you can look at some others. They do a great uh, a little jazzy rendition of "Just a Little Closer Walk with Thee." I saw the light. Um, uh, have a great video. I will pray. So, but uh, at least go watch "Ain't No Grave." So, uh, we prepared for about 150 folks, which is even higher than uh, our average. Our average, we probably averaged 130 uh, now uh, or up until now. And uh, you guys really turned out, had to set up about seven or eight extra tables, uh, had to go beg the kitchen to make more food. We were praying for the fishes and loaves because we had 230 people show up. So it was, it was awesome. And all praise and glory goes to God for that. So, uh, and the Jenna, Jenna uh, the Jenna, the Bowler Jacks, Blake and Jenna Bowler Jack, the Bowler Jacks were phenomenal, to say the least. So uh, still getting lots of great feedback on that. Okay, so speaking of Leisure Live Wires, there will be no Leisure Live Wires in March uh, because we are having the Oklahoma Glory Revival. I don't know if you've heard uh, about Asbury and different uh, places around the, the nation, but uh, revival is breaking out, y'all. I, I really believe we're in the midst of um, a... a hear me right, a nonviolent um, spiritual civil war or cultural civil war where, um, you know, spiritual warfare is real. But, uh, in, you know, and part of that is, I think, what we're going to study today. You'll you'll see that. Uh, but there's there's a lot of 
you know, we talked about light and dark last week. There's just good and evil, you know, right and wrong, um, pulling against each other. Well, that causes revival to break out. When the church is persecuted, you know, is when stuff happens, when it pops, when it grows. So um, so no leisure live wires because we're having the Oklahoma Glory revival. It's going to be awesome. Uh, lots of promotion material out about that. Uh, it's going to be starting Sunday, March 19th through Wednesday, the 22nd. Lots of great music, Greater Vision, Charles Billingsley. We'll have Gary Mathena leading our music for us. Um, next announcement real quick, bus trip. Uh, many of you know April 27th, we're going to have a really cool bus trip. I'll, I'll give you a very brief description. We'll load up about 7 a.m. Uh, we're only taking one bus, so and there's only room for about 50 people, and I know there's a lot of interest. Um, let me say this. If we uh, have, like, an abundance of interest, if, you know, like 120 people want to go, um, we'll do another bus trip in May. We won't. We probably won't do the same thing unless there's a, a high demand. But um, we'll we'll put together another bus trip in May so that we can go fellowship. I know a lot of you have been wanting to uh, do that. So, real quick, uh, this bus trip, we're going to go down to uh, the seminary in Southwestern um, uh, Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, and we're going to see the Lottie Moon display. They went to China and brought her whole house back, her her personal goods, her. I, I was told, I could be wrong, but even some of the roof tiles are off of her house and stuff. So to see where she actually sat and wrote uh, out her stuff and did her her life and the cup she actually drank from and all that's kind of kind of cool. So you, you get a little personal touch there. Then we'll go have lunch. Uh, then we'll go to the JFK Museum at the, actual, at the actual building, the School Book Depository, because this is the 60th anniversary of that. And then we will um, go home, but on the way home, uh, we're going to stop at Bucky's. So I'm excited about, I love Bucky's. Uh, I think you will too, if you've never been, it's kind of, it's a, it's, it's a gas station convenience store. It's like, it's like on cue on steroids, but 10 times bigger. So anyway, it's, it's hard to describe. You'll, you'll just have to see if you like coffee, that's a, that's it. You'll, you'll have fun there. Um, so then uh, tomorrow we have pray for the nation. Um, but we're also going to do some things uh, to to reach out into the community to try and get more people involved. Uh, really would love for y'all to come to pray for the nation. It's at 11 a.m. in the parlor. Uh, because of the Oklahoma Glory Revival, normally it is the third Tuesday of the, of the month, but we're going to move it back in March to the 28th. Normally it would be on the 21st, but it's going to be on March 28th uh, so that we don't have a conflict and, and uh, we don't step on any part of the revival. So uh and then for for april we'll be um you know doing some things that that kind of promote it out in the community and so hopefully we'll we'll get some other folks uh coming this this could be massive i mean like i said revival's breaking out and um you know we're going to give glory and credit and honor and praise to god uh but you know i i really think i i don't think any small coincidence that you know we've been having pray for the nation and look what's going on around the nation. Um, all right. Um, last thing, uh, as an announcement, I want you to get out and vote in March. And I'm, I'm usually, I'll never tell you what candidate to vote for that kind of thing, but, but I will say this vote against recreational marijuana. Um, I know it's, it's practically recreational now, but it doesn't mean we need to, you know, take it off the leash um you, you you think it's crazy now wait until there's no restrictions um even though the ones that that up now are kind of pseudo restrictions are kind of a farce but um yeah i'm a libertarian i believe people have a right and a choice i mean god and god created choice he just doesn't like a lot of the ones we make even myself you're looking at a bad choice guy uh sometimes but anyway uh vote against recreational marijuana we can we can vote this down, um, although there will be a large turnout from the people that want it. So, uh, you know, nothing they've ever promised has ever come through. You know, all this money will go to education, blah, blah, blah. So, all right. Let's go to the actual. I, I just want to change around. Get I, I just need to get those announcements out. Um, we're in uh, Sermon on the Mount. We just talked about salt and light. Um, that kind of thing. Here we are now, right after he does that, when he and now he's gone through the Beatitudes, he's, 
he's he's Jesus, God has talked about this, you know, oxymoron uh, kind of way of living, you know, that we're happy when we mourn, we're happy when we're poor in spirit, we're happy when, you know, we're we're meek, we're happy when we're persecuted. None of that made sense until he talked about the blessings and you look at the motivation, you know, uh, how about mercy? You know, usually it's like, I'm not going to show mercy. I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to inflict justice. I'm going to, you know, uh, you know, what's right is right. But no, happy or blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. Um, you know, the stuff we want, we ought to be. If we want mercy, we should be merciful. Um, you know, if we want comforted, we should be seen as mourning, that kind of thing. So um, he's, you know, he's he, the whole Sermon on the Mount uh, theme is we're called to be different. You know, the world's dark, we're called to be light. The world uh, literally um, doesn't have good taste. Uh, we're we're called to be salt. We're called to be flavor enhancement, uh, that kind of thing. Um, we talked about what salt and light do last week. So here, so so we're called to be different, right? It, you know, he's he's Jesus is flipping the script in the Sermon on the Mount, but then he gives a little warning. He comes in with this caveat uh, that I think we need to talk about. It's not very many verses, but we need to talk just a little bit about it. He says, do not presume that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. You know why he said that? Because he is the law. I mean, he is the word. He, he's, you know, he he created, he's the moral uh, lawgiver. You know, he he is the creator of the law. He says, I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill, to fill the law, to be the answer for the law. Um, you know, we don't really realize he meant, you know, they didn't at the time realize he meant I came to serve as the penalty. I came to uh, take your place um, and, and receive your punishment. <clears throat> he says, for I, truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of a letter shall pass from the law. The law is the law. You see, um, God did not create sin, but he created the standard of righteousness. Anything below that standard is unrighteous. So that ain't going to change. You know, the, 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 the standard, the, the expectation, what God requires is consistent and, and will not change. Jesus didn't come to abolish that, to change that, but to fulfill it, to demonstrate what it looks like. Uh, that kind of thing. He says, um, he says, the small letter or stroke of the letter shall not pass from law until all is accomplished. Wow. And we're, it, it hasn't been accomplished yet. Jesus is coming back. Uh, Therefore, whoever nullifies one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. I don't know about you. I don't want to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. I, um, the, you know, all of this revisionist history and all of this, um, you know, cultural Christianity and, and you know, let, um, yeah, you meet people where they are, but you don't, you don't let them, um, you know, you, you don't condone and justify and, and uh, rationalize those lifestyles, um, those ways of living that are not, you know, uh, congruent with the law. So it says, but whoever keeps and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, my my motivation, my goal is not to be considered great. And I mean, that's the opposite of humble. But I, I guarantee you, um, we're going to keep the law. We're going to teach the law. We're going to teach and preach Jesus, um, you know, and, and we're going to we're going to do what's right in the sight of God. Just like the Bible talked about Daniel. He did what was right in the sight of the, of the Lord um, it says, for I say to you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, just remember the the scribes and Pharisees, they were called whitewashed tombs. They they really weren't that righteous. But um, you know, when when your reality, uh, when the way you really live surpasses the fakeness of people who claim to be uh for the Lord. And you know, a lot of that comes from not being a self-promoter and not seeking you know, not trying to steal God's glory, that kind of thing. The uh, the humble, you know, God God opposes the proud, but He gives greater grace uh, to the humble. We we talked about all that in the 
uh, doctrine of humbling. So um, anyway, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. He is the fulfillment of the law. And so uh, that kind of makes sense because um, he is the fulfillment of himself. He's going to be who he is. He is going to uh, be all God all the time. And so, you know, he's, he's, he's talking about this mindset uh, about the law and about adherence uh, to God's word and, and striving to please God and that kind of thing. So, you know, it, don't try to uh, twist it or bend it or make it fit you. You try to fit it and see what happens. Um, you know, you be you be true uh, to the word of God. Um, that, that whole Psalms 119, um, you know, uh, thy word I will treasure in my heart so I may not sin against thee. You know, he, he loves the law. Um, and we've talked about this before. Because the law and God's word, that's like, you know, when at the bowling alley, when they put up the bumpers, it, it keeps us out of the gutter. So anyway, um, trying to make this uh, shorter and uh, we're going to stop there and then we'll, we'll keep going uh, in Sermon on the Mount. But I had to get those announcements out first. So, all right, that's what we got today. Love you all. Have a good time. And uh, if you get a chance, check out Savannah Station and uh, they're a good organization. They help lots of trouble kids and and they also just just so you know in their in their founding documents um they uh want to do everything uh to the glory of the lord so good good group all right talk to y'all later love you bye